unless my MSD pregnal is not legit. Let me double check. Ooh, my hands are cold. Vigor Steve here. Can you freeze reconstituted human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG? I've been seeing this comment pop up in the last couple of videos. And first, I wanted to face palm so hard, really just put it all the way here and then face palm myself repeatedly because I thought I was convinced that this was a horrible idea. So I ran an experiment. I wanted to see if reconstituted ACG after freezing would denature and turn the solution cloudy. I have right here a pre filled insulin syringe containing reconstituted ACG from Merck Sharp and Dome, MSD Pregnil, which is pharmaceutical grade that already underwent five freeze and thaw cycles. And the solution is still clear. It seems that my ACG is not denatured, or at least not denatured yet, which you can easily tell when the solution turns cloudy. That means that the peptide chain has been broken or uncurled and is no longer pharmaceutically active or has turned into something that might elicit an immune response. So, so far so good. I would say that my MSD pregnal is reasonably freezing resistant unless my MSD pregnal is not legit. Let me double check. Ooh, my hands are cold. Now I think that, yeah, I think it's real, right? Judging by the volume, uh, a whole handful, my MSD pregnal is certainly legit. And I've proven that many times with blood work. So that's certainly not the issue here. Now, the reason why I still don't recommend freezing your ACG for longer storage is that even though the solution didn't, didn't turn cloudy, it might still denature or lose potency to a certain extent. Because when you freeze other peptides, like insulin, for example, or growth hormone, which to be fair, I didn't freeze alongside this ACG experiment because I don't have insulin and growth hormone in stock right now. I've stopped using these peptides a while back. But I remember freezing insulin and growth hormone, reconstituted growth hormone in the form of nortitropin or genotropin, the last little bit of the pen, just to see what would happen. So I would only waste one or two IUs. And after one freeze and thaw cycle, that would certainly denature. The solution would turn cloudy. The same for insulin. I've tried that with several different insulins, including Humalog and Lantus. If you freeze these peptides, the product will denature and it's no longer pharmaceutically active. But it seems not to be the case with HCG. The reason why I don't recommend it is because you might still lose potency when you freeze a reconstituted peptide, the water actually expands. So as the water crystallizes and freezes, it gets in between the protein peptides and they might pull them apart. So the protein peptide might break, right? The protein chain might break or uncurl and unfold and turn into something else. So it's something I would generally not recommend. When you look at the amino acid structure of human chorionic gonadotropin, it has 237 amino acids, making it 46 amino acids bigger than growth hormone containing 191 amino acids and almost five times bigger than insulin that is unmodified containing 51 amino acids. Again, the insulin that we generally administer is slightly modified where one or two of the amino acids have been altered which alters the pharmacodynamics slightly, but mostly affects the onset peak and duration of when the insulin is actually active. Now, the reason why ACG might not denature when it's frozen could have to do with its structure. ACG is comprised of two different subunits, the alpha and the beta subunits. Its interior, where they attach, is hydrophobic. So that means water can't enter the ACG molecule itself while the exterior, the outside of the ACG molecule containing of the two subunits is hydrophilic, allowing it to be dissolved in water. So the entire molecule allows to be dissolved in water, but its interior expels or prevents water from entering because it's hydrophobic. So this might mean that water molecules might not be able to enter the structure and tear it apart as it's frozen and crystallizes and expands. Again, this is just pure speculation, maybe a little bit of bro science, but when you look at the structure and compare ACG to other peptide molecules, which don't have an interior core which is hydrophobic, they might still denature when frozen. And that's certainly the case with growth hormone, insulin, and IGF-1, for example. With one exception, there is a peptide out there which is stored frozen and only dethawed approximately one to two hours before administration. 
This peptide is IGF-1 bound to IGF-1 binding protein 3. The product name is called IPLEX. There's also an Incrolex available, which is just a regular bioidentical IGF-1. So in both cases, Incrolex and IPLEX, it's bioidentical IGF-1, not modified IGF-1 in the form of Chinese generics, either IGF-1 LR3 or IGF-1 DES, which alter its half-life peak onset and duration, similar to how insulins are modified. Incrolex should not be frozen because it will break the peptide chain apart and denature the entire product. Both pharmaceutical products are presented in solution similar to insulins and most growth hormones, so you don't need to reconstitute them. Incrolex you keep in the fridge until it's ready for use, and Iplex you keep in the freezer and de thaw approximately one to two hours before it's ready for use. Because they don't want the IGF-1 to detach from the IGF-1 binding protein, which would ultimately affect its pharmacodynamics. It's the whole reason why Iplex was designed to make it longer lasting, similar to how IGF-1 LR3 was modified to make it longer lasting, right? But IGF-1 LR3 is not exactly bioidentical, and IGF-1 bound to IGF binding protein 3 is bioidentical. So that's frozen, and I think the reason why that works is because IGF-1 binding protein 3, similar to ACG, has a hydrophobic core. Now, in the case of IPLEX, in this hydrophobic core, IGF-1 is attached to the binding protein. And in the case of ACG, that's merely where the subunits attach. So in both scenarios, it prevents water from entering the peptide molecule and break it apart as it's frozen. So I think this is the main reason why you can freeze ACG. Still, right, the structure, when you look at it, maybe a little bit of water could attach within and over time, it would certainly denature the protein and make it less bioavailable and you get less of a response. And I'm talking about multiple freeze and thaw cycles, not a single freeze and thaw cycles. So I think it should be okay, albeit not desired, not the ideal scenario, where you reconstitute your ACG, you pre-fill all of your syringes in the dose that you want, whether that's 250 IOs, 500 IOs, 1,000 IOs, or 2,000 IOs, you pre-fill your syringes, you leave a little bit of air at the top, because, well, again, the water will expand, so you don't let it expand into the, uh, the needle and then it clogs and then it would still form some sort of pressure and maybe it will pull the plunger right in the other direction, but still, right? Air is a little bit easier to contract as the water is expanding. So you would pre-fill these syringes, freeze them all in at the right time and then dethaw them over 10 minutes when they're ready for use. Personally, I would keep the ACG within the vial and use that within the two weeks, like I mentioned in the previous video, the main reason why your ACG turns out to be ineffective, because I'm unsure how much of a potency loss there would be from freezing the ACG merely once until it's ready for use. Again, you don't want to repeatedly freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw. I mean, if you want to waste money, feel free to donate to me at my PayPal account, right? I'll make sure that that money is put to good use and I'll put it in pharmaceutical ACG, which is going to um, right, uh, stimulate my testicles instead. So all joking aside, what I think I'll do over the next couple of weeks is try to figure out which of the peptide molecules that we tend to use in bodybuilding or for fitness aspirations, right, the performance enhancing drugs that we willingly take, which one of those peptide structures have a hydrophobic core or are significantly more hydrophobic compared to the peptides which tend to denature when frozen. Which as of now, I can personally tell you that it's insulin and growth hormone, so you don't have to run that very, very expensive experiment yourself. Don't even try. They will denature. Don't waste your money that way. Again, you know where to donate if you want to waste your money. So I'll try to figure that out, see which peptides can be frozen and which cannot. And then maybe we can find out a higher truth and preserve particular peptides which are more expensive, that are presented in packaging with a lot of IOs that we generally don't run through over the duration that bacteriostatic water can keep these reconstituted peptides from losing their potency. There's only a short window of time that you can use these vials once reconstituted, which I mentioned in a previous video, which I'll link at the end. So I'll try to figure out a higher truth so everybody knows how to proceed after reconstituting 
a particular peptide and I'll try to figure it out for all of the peptides which we tend to use in bodybuilding. So stay tuned for that. A little tangent, a little side note about the freeze drying process, allowing peptides to be lyophilized. What happens during freeze drying is that you have a solution with the peptide contained within that's sprayed within a one or two milliliter vial. As the water evaporates, it immediately turns into a frozen water crystal and that's performed under vacuum. So whatever evaporates and freezes gets vacuumed out. And this determines the structure of the lyophilized puck at the bottom of the vial. It starts as a liquid and as the water evaporates, right, from lower and lower portions, it immediately turns into a frozen water crystal and then the vacuum sucks it out. So that's how the puck is formed. Now, when all of the water has been removed from the puck, the vial remains under vacuum. In certain cases, a little bit of nitrogen is added because nitrogen doesn't react with the amino acids within the lyophilized puck. This ensures that the quality of the product remains intact and the bioavailability doesn't go down, the product doesn't degrade during transport. So this is basically how the lyophilization process works. And once the peptide is lyophilized and stored under vacuum within this vial, you can actually freeze it. Of course, it's a freeze drying process, but once you get it in the mail or through whatever methods of sourcing, you have your lyophilized peptides, you can freeze it because there's no water within the lyophilized puck, which would otherwise break the peptide bonds and the amino acids apart. Because again, it's water that expands as it cools down. And when it's frozen, all these water crystals have a tendency to break peptide bonds apart, denaturing the product and turning the reconstituted solution cloudy. And then the last thing I want to mention in this video, I went through all of the available pharmaceutical inserts of human chorionic gonadotropin, so that's the MSD Pregnil and many of the other brands. I went through all of the inserts and none of them specifically mentioned that you can't freeze ACG, whether that's before reconstitution or after reconstitution, none of them specifically mention it. They do recommend to store it at a stable temperature. So that's something of note, something you have to keep in mind. They don't mention anything about freezing, whether they're against freezing or for freezing ACG before or after reconstitution. And the, the ideal temperature seems to be all over the place. Um, but what they do agree on is that they say that after reconstitution, the ACG is uh, potent for up to 60 days. 60 days. From my experience, most ACG formulas start to lose potency after two weeks. Right? That's even pharmaceutical MSD pregnil or other pharmaceutical pregnils. Once reconstituted with the um, provided bacteriostatic water, after two weeks, the potency goes down. It has nothing to do with the product. It has to do with the surrounding air, which eventually ends up in the vial which might contain some contaminants or bacteria, which might affect the potency and the bioavailability of the reconstituted ACG. Man, another mouthful. Long story short, can you freeze your ACG? Um, oh, this one says you can. Personally, I'm not going to. I would rather go through my vial of ACG within two weeks or so, and then crack open a new one so I know it's fresh, because, well, there's nothing like fresh ACG. Um, no, well, no more sexual innuendo. I'll just leave it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're looking for the most comprehensive guides to bodybuilding pharmacology, you can find the ebooks on my website, vigorsteve.com slash shop. Personalized advice always available through consultations. You can find the rates in the consultation section. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at vigorsteve. Have a look at my workout clips channel where all my crazy sets are documented on a daily basis. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A front double bicep for you guys. Have a look at my link tree with all my sponsors and affiliates that I'm associated with, all the companies that I highly believe in. Make sure you use those discount codes to save yourself some money in the process. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.